Okay, I had to hammer it on a couple frets, and I had to spot level on a couple frets, but um, I got it. Nothing's buzzing anymore. It only had like four spots that were issues. Nothing's buzzing anymore. Um, I think I need a better tuner, because I tuned this thing up, and then I tuned it by ear, and it was so much better by ear, and that's like, even on this thing in normal channel, it's like, you know. It'll do some Van Halen-y kind of things already, so very, very impressive. I mean, it's like, yeah, um, it's cool. So, that's very lightweight. I'm surprised. Very lightweight, so definitely cool. I mean, it's like... It's out of tune again. play here because my uh, busted finger on it. Anyway, yeah, it's working, so, um, let me see, tune, intonated, action set, um, yeah, I think it's everything, so, I gotta trim the wires off, and put a strap on it, so, yeah, up next, Grand Reckoning, I'll be right back. Okay, I just weighed it. I think we have a new record. Two pounds, seven ounces. Yeah, I think my old record was three and a quarter pounds. So, yeah, two pounds, seven ounces. So, it'd be uh, about two and a half pounds. Told you it was light. Okay, the Grand Reckoning. Let's see what we got here. Okay, one two by four, eight foot long, spruce uh, from Lowe's for $3.48. That's the wood. 
all the wood. Um, what else we got? Ah, the pickup. It's a single coil. It's rated at 5.6K and uh, price is four dollars and six cents tuners nine dollars and 38 cents for silver neck thirty seven dollars forty six cents the jack a dollar sixty four for silver Saddles six sixty nine. Strap buttons a dollar and eight cents, and that brings you up to sixty dollars and thirty one cents plus the wood and the neck screws and the swing bar screws and all the supplies used. And the wood was what did I say three forty eight. We have 348, so that bring you up to 6380, almost 64 dollars, including the wood, and then all you need are supplies and four wood screws. Now, as for the supplies, I'm not really gonna map, gonna price them all out, but um, there were the four wood screws. There was uh, the spray paint that I used on the screws and on the shim for the bridge. And uh, the paint was a dollar a can at Lowe's. Kita would dye. Uh, Rit dye would be a low-cost substitute that's re readily available. Um, depending on what color you wanted to stain it or dye it. You know, if you did it in a natural, you wouldn't have to pay anything for dye. Uh, you could other, use other types of dyes, you know, I've heard of like using coffee or tea as a, as a dye. There's also that thing where you can like take vinegar or something and, 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 uh, and, um, steel wool and, and make your own like dye. But anyway, um, acrylic. Two cans of acrylic, that's actually not going to be as cheap as like a, a brush on poly. Uh, sandpaper, probably get away with one variety pack. You might actually want to go with like, uh, with uh, maybe, like I've, I can find variety packs on eBay that include stuff at, at finer grits like 2000, which you wouldn't necessarily find at like a, a Liz or a Home Depot. You might find a nice variety pack in like the automotive paint section of like uh, AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts, someplace like that, or uh, even Walmart. Um, let's see, I used uh, masking tape and polishing compound and Windex or naphtha. Windex is a little cheaper. Used uh, toilet tissue and a couple different sharpies to do touch-up work. Uh, use CA glue and maybe a foot's worth of shielded cabling. Like I said, for shielding cabling, you can always uh, cannibalize the, the, the wire off a keyboard or something like that. The cable off a keyboard or a mouse from a computer. And the, that's shielded cabling there. Um, this actual pickup that I use is rated at 6.18K, which is just a little bit hotter than the one listed on eBay for $4.06. And this is also rated at 1.92 Henry's. And you heard what it sounds like through a 3 watt amp, so you get the idea. I mean, it works, so... Um, Other supplies used the little small brass nails, 
you can pick these up. Like I said, you can get like a box of a hundred of them for a couple bucks. And uh, electrical tape was used in order to uh, tape up the connection at the uh, pickup side, pickup end. And of course, a set of strings, of, you know, whatever kind of strings you like. I'm running Ernie Ball 8s on these. I use those on all my builds, so. And uh, a strap. And, uh, you know, guitars typically don't come with a strap, so. I guess technically that should not be part of the cost of the build. And I think that's it for all the supplies and stuff like that. So now admittedly all the supplies are going to add up to a little bit more. But yeah, you're looking at about, what I say, $64, something like that. $64 and, and you know, you could... Even with the cost of supplies, odds are you can pull this in for, you know, around $100 or less, I'd say. And, you know, if you're doing this as a hobby or something like that, then you're going to have things like, or if you're in general just like a woodworker or something like that, a lot of these things you're going to have around. You're going to have the glues and, and the dyes and things like that around. Good chance. So, and, yeah. As far as tools go, uh, you can pull this off with a saw and a sanding block and a drill. And I think that was it in the more, in the way of like more sophisticated. Oh, and a soldering iron, obviously you'd need. Um, and some kind of a rasp in order to do the neck. But you could even do the do the neck with like you know a draw knife or a kitchen knife even so. So yeah, if you if you really were trying to save on tools, you could do it some really basic tools as well. I'm trying to think of what other tools I ended up using. Let's see, I used the I used the electric palm sander, but you use a sanding block for that. I used the plane, but you can use like. A, like a rasp and a and a uh, and a sanding block for that, or you can use a plane. I actually was digging through my seldom used toolbox today and and found that I do have a Japanese draw plane. I probably should have been using that instead of the power plane in order to do this thing. And uh, let's see, um, yeah, a soldering iron and a drill and that's pretty much it um towards the end there i did need i needed a i needed a notch straight edge in order to set the neck and i did use a fret rocker to check the frets and i used a, a crowning file and a leveling beam because yeah see I ended up leveling the fret so I needed pretty much more or less all the tools necessary to do a fret leveling and crown and stuff like that the only thing I didn't do is polish so so yeah there I I wasn't able to get around any any of those kind of tools really so so yeah no real savings there if if you don't have those basic tools then you would probably need to get them but you see all those are very cheap that leveling beam that I used and the and the half round crowning file and um let's see what else did I use use leveling beam I used the crowning file I used a little bit of sandpaper and uh I think that was about it on the frets I might have done a little bit of a little bit of dressing with just a regular fret dressing in fret end dressing file but that was about it and you can get you know you can get a beam and 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 uh and you can probably find a package deal where you get a beam and and both of those types of files the end dressing file and the crowning file all three for like twenty dollars thirty dollars something like that probably i wouldn't be surprised because they do have packages out there like that you can get like a 
you can get like a half round crowning file and a fret rocker and fret guards and a couple other little miscellaneous tools for like 20 bucks or something like that so yeah it's a good way to it's a good way to get one or two or three tools that you need all at once and then you know a couple extras that you don't necessarily need or you might already have or whatever but it, it turns out that you can you can get like two or three tools for the price of like one tool when you buy them in like you know one of those little kits so that's a good way to save on the the basic fret working type tools and i think that's about all i've got in the way of like suggestions of like how to keep the budget down on a build like this so so yeah not all it can be done with not a whole lot of fancy tools you know you don't need like thickness planers and stuff like that um i did use the drill press you don't have to have a drill press all you got to do is just be slow and accurate for doing something like this here um you don't have to have a drill press just be slow and accurate or what you can do is uh is take one of those little uh bubble levels one of these kind of bubble levels that you can pick up pretty cheap and just stick it on the end of your drill and that'll keep you level so um yeah i think that's the only other big tool i use oh i did use I use the the table saw in order to cut out parts of the body, but um, but once again, that's something you can do with a hand saw, so or a coping saw, whichever way, a saw of some size. So, yeah, this is a build that I'd say you know even with supplies you can pull this off for easily under under a hundred dollars, given that the basic parts are only about sixty five. So, so. Call it 65 plus supplies. And the big surprise is the weight. I'm really, really surprised. But then again, I mean, it's like, it's not locking tuners. It's got the, the, this type of bridge on it that's a very lightweight bridge. Basically, all you have is the weight of the saddles. The whole thing's made of pine, which also is going to cut down the weight. You know, this whole... Everything except for the neck probably weighs as much as just a single Bobingo body does for like an X13, just the, just the Bobingo alone cut out to the shape of the body with no hardware or bar or anything in, or neck installed. So, yeah. But anyway, um, I think that's going to do it for this build. So, I think we'll call it a success. And, you know, was there anything experimental? Oh, the only thing experimental was, was trying a 4x2, and it saved, what, maybe an inch off the length of the guitar, so. No great, no great savings there on size. And, uh, yeah, so you might as well put them all over on this side, and uh, that way you're sure that they'll never get bumped by your leg or anything like that, so. Now, one thing I did notice is that, and this is something endemic to Fender saddles, is that when you're resting your hand right here for semi-palm muting, is that these little screws tend to stab you if they're sticking up high. So, maybe shorter screws are called for for this particular setup. Yeah, I've, I've heard of people putting in shorter or longer screws, depending on what they need. I've actually heard of people putting in shorter screws so that they don't stab you, so. But anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm going to shut up, and I think that'll do it for this episode. So, until the next one. Yeah, what is next? Um, until the parts come in for the Flying V, I guess I'm working on guitars 7 and 8. So, see everybody in the next one. Until then. Everybody, have a good one.